What's up guys? At this rate, many companies are racing to the bottom when it comes to pricing in pickleball. This is the Hudef Viva Pro and it is officially the cheapest thermoformed paddle on the market. A lot of people have been wondering if this just made all of the other thermoformed paddles irrelevant. So let's take a look and find out. The Viva Pro can be purchased for $99, but with discount code PBStudio, you can save 10%. It comes in 16mm and 14mm versions, features a polymer core, T700 raw carbon fiber face, elongated shape, a 5.5 inch handle, and the shape appears to be the same as the Carbon 1X. The website says both grips are a 4.25 inch grip circumference, but I measured the 14mm and it was 4.125 and the 16mm was 4.25 inches. The difference was noticeable in my hand even before I measured. The static weight is 7.8 to 8.3 ounces, and the swing weight for the 14 millimeter was 117, while the 16 millimeter was 120. The RPM of the 14 millimeter was 1776, and the 16 millimeter was 1772. Other features include thermoforming, injected foam, and a limited lifetime warranty. All right, so on paper, this paddle is ridiculous. It has specs like the $230 Carbon 1X, but it's being sold for $99 and with a better warranty. So what's the catch? Well, the first thing I noticed was that the power is lacking compared to the other thermoformed paddles on the market. The 16 millimeter is on par with most Gen 1 raw carbon fiber paddles like the Ronbis R1.16, Yola Vision, and Groovins. When it came to the 14 millimeter Viva, it was on par with the 16 millimeter thermoformed paddles or maybe just a step below when regarding power. I used to be a player that could only use control paddles, but this year I started to gravitate toward power paddles. Because of this, I enjoyed the 14mm Viva the most. It had adequate power on drives and serves. While the RPMs don't seem on the same level as the other thermos on paper, I found it had more than enough spin during my playtesting. There was no point where I felt it was holding me back because of a lack of spin. When it came to hand battles on the 16mm, I did miss having the extra power because it was just a little bit harder to end those fights, or I found myself getting behind compared to my 16mm double black diamond. The feel of these paddles is quite soft. With most of the other thermos, they have felt considerably stiffer, and the Hudefs just don't have that same feeling. I would swap between my double black diamond and the hue def and it was very apparent which one I was hitting because of the plush feel on the hue def versus the stiff feel on the double black diamond. If you were hoping that either of these paddles would have top tier power, they unfortunately don't. As you might expect with the 16mm feeling more like a gen 1 paddle, the control was fantastic. It played exactly how I would expect, which means my soft game is great. Whenever you come from a thermoformed paddle back to a Gen 1, anything related to dinking and blocking feels so much easier. And that's one of the biggest appeals of the Gen 1 paddles. You get exceptional control and that was no different on the Viva 16mm. It felt very easy to place the ball with proper depth and height. The 14mm is a little bit harder to control, but if you're coming from a Carbon 1X, 6.0, Vatic Pro, or Legacy, I don't think you'll have any issues getting used to it. After using the 16mm for a little bit, it just took a game or two to dial my dinking and drops back in with the 14mm. But once I was used to it, there was no issues. When it came to hand speed at the net, I wouldn't say that either of these felt considerably slower than what I'm used to, but they are trending more toward the heavier side of swing weight. If you're sensitive to higher swing weights, you may want to avoid the 16mm. When testing them myself, the 16mm was on the slower side in my hand battles, and the 14mm, while not significantly faster, did feel easier to maneuver through the air. If you're used to paddles like the Legacy Pro, Carbon 1X, or Hyperion, you'll probably have no issues with these. But if you're used to using a paddle that's more of a standard shape, kind of like a Carbon 2, then these probably are going to feel a bit heavier. As we've come to expect with thermoformed paddles, the sweet spots are great, and Hudefs is no exception. Outside of the sweet spot, it has a little bit more energy being returned to the ball than Gen 1 paddles, which can save you when you don't hit a great shot, especially on blocks. The one comment I would make is that the 14mm didn't have as great of a sweet spot. While not far behind, I found myself having more balls near the edge die a bit more than I was expecting. I just want to pause this video really quick and let you guys know about my newsletter. This year, I launched a weekly newsletter where I help you stay up to date on the latest paddles and upcoming gear. 
I also often post thoughts about these paddles long before the video goes up. So if you sign up right now, you can get a free download link to my lead tape cheat sheet. So if you're interested, the link is in the description. All right, so we actually filmed this video already, but uh, we had a little update. So my brother started using the 14 millimeter Hue Def after I finished writing this, gave it to my editor, they finished the first draft, and in three play sessions, he managed to break it. And you can hear how bad it is. This is by far the worst DLAM or crushed core we've had. In my Electrum video, you guys heard me talk about the crushed core. This has both. You can feel the face actually wiggle, and when you press in with your thumb, you like almost this entire frame of this paddle is flexing. So this is by far the worst one I've seen, and this paddle is nuked. I actually, he was warming up, and I walked on the court, and I was like, yeah, that paddle sounds busted, and sure enough, it was busted. And then he played like four or five games of the tournament every single game. It got progressively worse and worse. It was like an exponential... Uh, downpour. So when I originally wrote this, I talked about HueDef actually has uh, been manufacturing Padel paddles for a long time, and they have some experience there, and I was hoping maybe that would give them the solution for this. Clearly it didn't. This one is completely toast. Uh, it doesn't have that many hours of play on it. So I don't know, maybe that goes along with the price tag. Maybe that's what you can expect. It has the lifetime warranty, so if you want to chance it, you can always go and warranty it, but this is really bad. So just thought I'd let you guys know. Okay, so I actually had to re-record my entire ending statement on this video because of that paddle breaking. So here's the deal. The Vivas are really good paddles. For $85 with a discount code, these are in unbeatable value and a lifetime warranty. The only thing is I just don't know how easy it's going to be to get a replacement since they aren't a US-based company like Selkirk. The biggest thing I would say is if you're considering the 16 millimeter Viva and you already have a Gen 1 raw carbon fiber paddle, there's no need to get it. In my opinion, it really doesn't hit that much harder than a Gen 1 raw carbon fiber paddle, maybe a little bit, but I wouldn't consider it a massive upgrade. The 14 millimeter definitely hits a little bit harder and would be worth looking into if you wanted to try a thermoformed paddle for cheaper and get some more power. However, you guys are just gonna have to keep in mind how fast this paddle broke. Our one paddle is only a single data point and I haven't heard of any others breaking, but with how fast it broke in my brother's hand, I'm just shocked because that's the fastest one we've had yet. So it makes it hard for me to want to give it a glowing recommendation. So you're just gonna have to decide if chancing it is worth it to you or if you're fine warranting it if it does happen. Since the 16 millimeter does not hit that much harder than a Gen 1 raw carbon fiber, I'd be more tempted to recommend to you a Rhombus R1.16. While it's not $85, it is $100 with discount code PB Studio. And those seem to have far less issues since they're a Gen 1 raw carbon fiber and they aren't thermoformed. So all of that to say, the HUDEFs are an absolutely amazing value, but with that breaking, it's making it really hard for me to know if it's going to be an issue in the future. And the only thing I can say is that if you want to buy one, you're just gonna have to be okay with the fact that it might happen and you might have to warranty it. Otherwise, I think if you want the safe option, just go and buy the Ronbus. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.